Hey guys, this is Backdraft, and welcome to another episode on the Symmetrium server. This is episode number 22. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, in the last episode, we had a pretty major building episode that we had, and in that episode, we got the throne room finally done. This was the last interior room in the palace, and I'm so stoked that we're finally done with all of the inside rooms. We did some map art. First time I ever did some map art to add this awesome border to the edges of the carpet. We got the golden elephant throne that, of course, I had to start the episode sitting in because what Sultan is not complete with their golden elephant throne. It is just so awesome. And of course, we also have all of the terraforming and walls built around the inner part of the city in front of the palace. So we are finally ready to go with the community building project to build up the city. I've started messing around with some building designs in my live streams. If you guys aren't able to tune into my live streams, that's okay. You can always watch them after the fact. But if you're curious about joining in, I live stream every Wednesday and Sunday between 6 and 7 o'clock EST. Make sure you guys come and hang out. But anyway, for this episode, I want to step away from building because we have been doing a lot of building in the last few episodes. And there is a couple things that I have been putting off that I want to do. And it's all related to redstone. Because I've had so many requests for redstone projects down at Minever, and because I've had a lot of ideas for redstone projects that I'm going to be building for myself, I created this little book that I called my redstone projects book. And I currently have a few things in there. So the first thing that we need to get done is the Netherwood farm that was requested by Lord Jake Ryan. He is paying well for that. We also have the Birchwood farm, which has been requested by Shirion, a.k.a. Nautilus. And of course, I have a couple farms for myself. I have a wool farm that I want to build and, of course, a raid farm. And I actually think we're going to build the raid farm in this episode, in addition to a bunch of things that need to get done through Minever, including the Netherwood farm for Jake and the Birchwood farm for Nautilus. So I want to make it my goal to get the raid farm done by the end of this episode, including a bunch of other projects that we need to get done through Mineover. I made a promise to everybody on the server that I would provide excellent redstone service, and it has been a while since I have done some of the projects that have been promised. But anyway, I just want to show you guys something real quick. So off to the left over here, which is south of my base, there is actually a pillager outpost. And what is a pillager outpost good for if not making a raid farm? So if you guys aren't familiar with how raid farms work, if the world will load, you can probably see the tower off in the distance. There's a little uh, wool shack thingy that they build. There's the tower right there. So essentially, when you kill a captain, I think is what they're called, of the pillagers, essentially you could get the bad omen effect. I think we have one who's getting kind of mad right now. He's coming up close. When you kill a captain, so the captains are the guys with the little flags on their backs. That guy obviously wasn't a captain. You have a chance to get the bad omen effect. And with the bad omen effect, if you make your way into a village, then you will start a raid and you will be barraged with several waves of enemies, including witches and pillagers and ravagers and all kinds of different enemies all the way up. I think it's like seven or eight different waves of enemies. So essentially what we're going to do is off over above the... Um, ocean that's right back here. So that guy's a captain right there. If we killed him, we, we would have a chance of getting the bad omen effect. We're actually going to fly away so that we don't have to fight these guys right now. But next to the base over here, above the ocean, we're going to be building the raid farm. Now, essentially, the raid farm is a way to exploit. I, it's kind of a harsh word, but it's a way to exploit having bad omen. You set up a little village in the middle of nowhere, and then you control where the waves actually spawn, and then you can get rid of everything that spawns in each of the raids and collect up all of their drops. So now that everybody's all hyped up about the raid farm, we're gonna get to doing redstone projects and we're actually going to start with the project for the other Symmetrians. We need to take care of our friends and get them the things that have been promised to them. And plus we'll be able to make some juicy, juicy diamonds. I actually think I have, what is it? a little over two stacks of diamond blocks. So we are in no need of diamonds, but I always have a lot of fun doing these redstone projects and of course we got to fulfill our promises so i think we're going to take care of jake's netherwood farm first so we're gonna head over to his base so i think i was here once on stream but never in a video this base is super super awesome this is right outside of his nether portal which is looking super snazzy we've got a purple block fountain 
diamond decorations that's just the super super flex and tons of bookcases this is a really really awesome library but if we come right over here this is actually where he has a hidden door i know because i built it for him that is one of the redstone projects we did for him but right outside of his little mayan pyramid over here he has what he calls the tower of light or something i mean it's pretty big so we're gonna have to load it in oh that's so sweet so so we look at the we has the anubis statue little angel statue over here there's all kinds of stuff he's doing in this area so inside this tower of lights or i can't remember exactly what he's calling it. i think that's what he was calling it that is where we're going to build the netherwood farm for him and i believe he has all of the materials ready to go there's a couple other farms in here too the cactus farm and i think that's a uh Chorus fruit farm is what that looks like. Flower farms, all kinds of stuff in here. He is going to have resources out the yin yang. So right up here actually is where all uh, is where the netherwood farm is going to go. So he should have all of the materials ready for us, and we're gonna get to building, and we're gonna do these redstone projects in a third-person time lapse. Of course, you guys know how we roll. We're gonna breeze through this, hopefully, so we can get to the next one as well. And we want to save as much time as possible when it comes to doing these projects so that we can make as many symmetrians as happy as possible, of course. So I hope you guys enjoy the redstone building projects and roll that music. redstone project done and our friend lord jake ryan is very very satisfied with this he made a couple tweaks to it so he could harvest a bunch of different blocks he also wanted to harvest the roots and the wart blocks and the stream lights so he made a couple changes to it but it has been cranking out the resources for him this is his second account honey bunny over here he's over here checking his stocks but this thing turned out very very well and he gave us a very generous payment of six diamond blocks and a redstone shulker which is full of all sorts of goodies that i actually hate crafting so that was very very, very awesome of him on to the next one we've popped on over to my buddy shirion slash nautilus's base and he has dug out this awesome area underneath for us to build our amazing wood farm so more redstone work to do and so little time let's keep it going Another satisfied customer. I hope Nautilus likes his new wood farm. I love building these things. We built one for ourselves, and of course, when you do that and people see it in your videos, they get interested in it for themselves. So, Shirian is not on right now, but we agreed upon four diamond blocks for this build which isn't too shabby. So that means we made a total of 10 diamond blocks from our redstone projects from this episode, but now it's time to concentrate on some redstone for ourselves. Back to base. It's time for the raid farm. I have popped over to the creative world so I could show you guys how this bad boy works. There goes back to have dropping down. He'll be back up in just a sec. But either way, this is the raid o -matic, the unique and awesome raid farm designed by the one and only ray works i will leave the link in the description for the design to this uh raid farm it is amazing so let me try and explain exactly what's going on here so all the way towards the bottom you just saw the player backdraft just shot back up 
So what's happening is towards the bottom down there, there are a couple villagers essentially, which establishes a village. We also have, as you can see, some beacons just to give the player some power ups. So the player essentially will go off and get themselves the um, uh, bad omen effect. And the way that you get bad omen is you have to go to either a pillager outpost or find a patrol or go to an existing raid and kill a pillager that has the flag on her back. I don't know if we can see one in this uh, current wave. Uh, doesn't look like it. Um, but essentially, if you go to a pillager outpost, like I said, and there's one directly next to where my base is, like I said, we're in the Symmetria Seed right now, um, there will be a bunch of pillagers that spawn at that outpost right over there. And you will eventually find one, like I said, that has a flag on their back. And when you kill that one, you get the bad omen effect. Now, with the bad omen effect, if you enter a village, you trigger a raid. So what this farm does, I know it's a harsh word, but it essentially exploits that game mechanic. And as you can see, that wave of the raid just spawned up top there. So what happens is once they have the bad omen effect, the player will drop down like you guys saw before, go all the way down and essentially enter the village. Now, when they enter the village, the raid will start and they will be shot all the way back up. Now, the raid actually has nowhere else to spawn, so the only place they can spawn is right up here. Now, once they spawn on these uh, ice blocks right here, they will get pushed off into the water streams below, and like you're seeing here, get filtered down into this killing chamber down here, and the player will AFK and just continue to swipe at them. So once the player has killed the entire wave, essentially, we just have a, a clock over here that's controlling its... Um, I guess the time that it takes for the player to kill the raid they will drop all the way down back into the village and trigger the next wave of the raid now in just a couple seconds backdraft will be coming back up and you'll see right here that the next wave of the raid is going to spawn i think that there's some ravagers in this one. Oh, there's a captain by the way those are the uh raid captains or whatever they're called and yeah so you can see a ton of guys are now spawning up here and they are dropping down so there's also ravagers that spawn with raids as well that's why we have the lava here so the Ravagers will get pushed to the sides and into the lava and they will attempt to swim to the top of the lava, which they can't, and they will just burn up and die along with the guys that are riding them. So that is essentially it. If, Like I said, if you guys are interested in the ins and outs of this farm, you can check out Rayworks' videos. Um, the last little thing I had to make a bit of a change here was there's a repeater clock here that's controlling these pistons that are shooting back and forth. And the reason these pistons are actually shooting back and forth is so that the guys that drop down don't actually die from fall damage because if they were to land right on top of that path block right there they would die from fall damage so we have these pistons going back and forth to kind of limit the amount of guys that are falling into the player's killing range i guess is what you can call it and um if if they're off essentially they will die from fall damage so if for some reason you wanted them to all just die from fall damage you could turn these pistons off but they will land on one of two of the trap doors and they will take enough damage to make it so that the player can kill them with just one swipe of the sword that they are holding so that is it like i said uh, if you're interested in the full design you can check out the video that i have linked in the description let's pop back over to the server back over on the server now i have collected up all of the resources that we need to build this farm so it is a pretty tall farm it actually goes up almost all the way to the ceiling of the world but it is rather skinny i guess is what you can call it i think it fits in the confines of one chunk so it is pretty skinny farm like i said so we're out over the ocean the pillager outpost is right over enough in that direction the world doesn't actually load that far and off in that direction is where the palace is so we are within a reasonable range to go and get the bad omen effect from over there and also within range of the palace so that we can transfer all the loot that we get from this thing because this thing does crank the loot quite well and you guys know what time it is it is time for a third person time lapse to build up this farm i hope you guys enjoy and roll that music
built and the villagers are now in place. I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse and the little bits I showed of me moving the villagers from the villager breeder over in the palace way over here. That was a bit of a challenge, took quite a while. So now there's only one thing left to do. We have to get bad omen. Okay, the captain is right down there. Uh, oh, there he is. Okay, we got it. Let's get out of here. Ah! Alrighty, we got it. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing actually works. Okay, okay, the raid bar is filling up. That's a good sign. And it's shooting us back up. There's the raid horns. And there shouldn't be lava there right now. Welp. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, at least everything spawned in the right place. <laughs> okay, second time's the charm. There goes the raid. Hopefully this time there's no lava there. I had to basically reverse it so that it would flick every other time but I think we should be okay now okay there's the raid horn and they should be falling down now and there we go all right it works I don't think we're gonna get as many drops as we would on hard mode the server is actually on normal which is fine not a big deal but anyway, ladies and gents, I think we have some AFK to do. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, please do not hesitate to hit that thumbs up. And if you're looking forward to future episodes of the Master Your Server, then hit that subscribe button bell for notifications. I will show you guys the loot that we get from this thing in the next episode. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.